Greetings, orchestra students. This is Mr. T, trying to get you ready for our concert program coming up. Just like in the fall and the winter, we are going to have a concert that is entirely online, so we're going to be recording videos this week, next week, and probably all the way up until the end of the school year to get all of our concert videos ready. When you think about it, we only have seven weeks of orchestra left. Our last week of orchestra is the first week of May, and after that, we come to a close. So it's time to get fiddling. All right, last video today. I think I have time to record. I'm wearing a mask because uh, we're still in school and I do not want to be sharing my aerosols with everybody. But here's the activity. It's an activity with a coin on the back of your hand. I've got a five peso piece here, one of my favorite coins. Put it on the back of your hand, hold your bow hold like this. What the coin does is it keeps you from turning your wrist, otherwise the coin falls off. But you hold your coin flat as you can be. This works for all instruments. And we move our bow up and down, forward and backward, just with the fingertips. Maybe draw a circle. But the more flexible we can be with these fingers, stronger, more dexterous, that means easy to move fingers, and do what you want to do. It really helps with playing with the bow and control with the bow. All right, now if you end up doing, oh no, it fell off. I got it! Put it back on the back of your hand and try again. Now if you're a cello or a bass player, you know, your pinky's off on the side like this, we still want to be able to move our bow back and forth and see if we can move the, that stick up and around in a circle, forward like this, like a teeter-totter, and so on. Now this only works, my fourth and fifth graders, if our thumb is in the right location. We want that thumb to be right there on the notch of the bow where it meets the stick and the frog shape. Thumb like that. Violin players, viola players, give you a little trick. The back of your thumbnail can go like this against the ferrule of the bow. And that's a kind of a, it's kind of like locking your thumb in place there. Be careful, all musicians, that it doesn't stick through. This is super bad. Uh, don't do that, please. Thumb on its tip. And if you're a cello bass player, the thumb pretty much looks the same way. We want it just like that. Now, careful your thumb doesn't look like this. See how my thumb went white? I'm squeezing very hard. No squeezies, please. Nice and gentle, like a baby could take it out of your hand. Of course, if you ever play with a baby, they, they grab pretty hard. Make sure they don't put your bow in, your, in their mouths, otherwise you might have a slobber cleanup fee. Happy practicing. I hope this helps you with your bow control, your bow strength, and your bow dexterity. Good luck, everybody. Hey guys, I thought I might take you to the Musical Mountain. This one's for fourth graders. It's a great warm up every day. I'm gonna show you a couple variations on, on how to make this work for you. Uh, so first off, some people may feel like they need to play four notes per pitch. What that means, the first Musical Mountain, D, E, D. So that means playing one, two, three, four Ds. Four E's. Four Ds. Okay, here it is without the pauses. Now, if that's too easy, go to two per pitch. If that's too easy, do just one per pitch. And then, of course, you can do it faster or slower based on your needs. That works for some people. Some people like to challenge themselves to how fast can I go? Faster. 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 Oh no. Oh, it's stuck. Okay. Here's another way. Some people may need some time in between the notes to change the fingers. So you might try this. Change finger. Change finger back. That might be something you need. You could also do it with one note. Change finger. Change finger. That's also good. Let's go on to the next musical mountain. Here 
it is with stop practice. Change finger. Change finger. Back to first. Back to none. Here it is with one note. Stop. 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 The whole thing about that is three words. Three words. Stop. Stop. Think. Then play. Stop and think. Stop and think. Stop and think. Stop and think. Play. All right, let's do the next musical mountain. D E F G F E D. D E F G F E D. Single notes. Okay, last mountain. D E F G A. Whoops, sorry. D E F G A G F E D. All five notes. Now those were some extra credit variations there. Good luck with your Musical Mountains warm-up. I'm going to do a, a, a whole session of Musical Mountains warm-up with one note per pitch. Here's how quick this warm-up can eventually go when you're feeling this good at moving through the notes. Next step is to do musical valleys instead. Start at the high note, come down, and then go back up. I forgot a note, whoops. There it is. After that, we're going to talk about musical skips. Good luck in your practice. I recommend a warm-up routine called Little Mountains. This one gets you ready for any of the pieces on our concert. So I would start with uh, the smallest mountain, 010. And then I do a little break. Tap my foot. Tap my other foot. Spin around safely. Last four squats. Jump on one foot. Jump on the other foot. That's the first mountain. Next mountain is O one two one O cellos O one three one O basses O one four one O again do something interesting in between to keep your brain motivated now I'm gonna add a fourth note O one two three two one O cellos O one three four three one O bass O one four shift one shift four one up or alternate you can use the open G string O one four open G four one open D last one O one two three four three two one O violins violas. 0134 A 4310 cellos, 014 shift 141 shift 410 basses, or alternate 
O1 for open G1, open G4, 1, open D. Let's begin with Mary Lee. This first video is for fourth graders. I'll make a separate video for fifth graders. In Mary Lee, we played this piece before, but we played it pizzicato. It'd be good to review it pizzicato, I think, too. Step is to add the bow. Here's the whole piece. When we're practicing pieces, Sometimes it's good to find the measure that is the most challenging for you. For example, measure one and measure five in this piece have a different note for every beat of the measure. Two, one, oh, one for violins, violas, three, one, oh, one for cellos, and four, one, oh, one for basses. So what I do is I just practice that bit by bit. You may need a long pause in between. I'm going to show you the back side of this so you can see it more easily for violins. Some of us may not be ready for that step, so here's what I said. Pause, practice. Pause, change finger. Pause, change finger. Pause, place finger. And I do that again and again. and faster with less of a pause in between. Then I put it back into the piece. Good. It's going to stick and I go on to the end. Page 19 is where you're going to find our next three pieces. Okay, let's get to Eau Claire de la Lune. <clears throat> I think the trickiest part is measure three. When we have to skip from open D to F sharp. Cellos, you have to go from open to three bases open to four. So I would just practice that. Now if that's not working with the bow, take the bow out of the equation. Do it here on your instrument. If I'm a violin player or a viola player, I just open two. Open two. If I'm a cello player, open three. If I'm a bass player, open four. Just practice that motion going from no fingers to the fingers you need for the instrument you play. Then I transfer it to the strings. Open, two, violin viola players. Open, three, cello players. Open, four, bass players. Let's measure three. Once I get very comfortable with just those two notes, I'll add the last two notes of that same measure. D, F sharp, E, E. O, two, one, one, violin violas. O, three, one, one, cellos. O, four, one, one, bass. And then I go through the whole piece. Eau Claire de la Lune. Go circle set. Remember that part? Slavonic folk song. This one has two measures that are exactly the same. So we only have to practice the first measure because we'll know we'll have sec second measure at the same time. And then we just have to practice a scale at the end. One, one, two, two, three violins, one, one, three, three, four cellos, one, one, four, four open G basses. Again, 
The skips, I think, are the parts that need to be practiced the most. So in measure one, we have a skip from the F sharp to D. This is exactly the opposite of going from D to F sharp. That's in Eau Claire de Lune. Here's in Slavonic folk song. So I practice that, and then I put the whole measure together starting on the first note G. And then we just do it again. And you've got it. After that, it's just one, one, two, two, three. Now, the last piece on page 19 is probably the most challenging because it uses all five notes of the D string, all five of the notes that we know as fourth graders. So the first part is like our mountain warm-up from earlier, but it starts on second finger. Same thing in the second line. difference between the first line and the second line is the last measure, measure of each. First line is F-E-E, -E, the second line is E-D-D. -D. I'm sure you know this piece very well because you've heard it so many times, Beethoven being a very famous composer. For my violin friends, I want you playing, and viola friends, I want you playing fourth finger for A instead of open A. If you're a cello player, you need to use the tunnel skill. I'm trying to get the camera just so. There we go. Pretend this is my D string and this, this is my A string. You want your fingers nice and tall so that you can play fourth finger. And when your bow goes to the A string, your fourth finger can stay there. It's called the tongue. For bass players, you have the choice to shift in this piece to third position or play up to open G and use first finger A. Also on our repertoire list was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and London Bridge. We'll see if we get to that piece this week. Uh, many of my schools and students have been working on just page 19, and we are not yet experts on these three pieces. If we do become experts very quickly, I think we can move on and add Twinkle Twinkle and London Bridge. Well, hey, this video is for fifth graders. I want you to do this for musical practice to warm up, especially getting ready for Mars Walk. It starts with a regular D scale that we already know. Many of us like to start with two quarter notes per pitch, so I'll demonstrate that first. Here's the D scale. step is to change our F sharps to F naturals, our C sharps to C naturals. If you're a cello player, it's the difference between playing third finger to second finger on the D string and the A string. For my bass friends, it's the difference on the D string between playing fourth finger F sharp and second finger F, and on the A string third position playing C with one instead of two in third position. So here's the next step, is playing F naturals and C naturals on this scale. Still starts on D. F with two. C with low two. That's step two. You want, may want to spend some time on that for your second finger cellos and basses and your low two violins and violas. The next step is to add one more note to this scale to, to change, and that's B flat on the A string. For violins and violas, that's a low one between the tape and the nut, right there in the middle. For cello players, it's called a back extension. We make this shape with our hands. Remember, we practiced climbing up to practice that back extension shape. For a bass player, a B flat on the G string 
is in first position and we play second finger instead of fourth finger. Second finger in first position plays B flat on the G string for a bass player. So now the scale is going to sound like this. We're going to keep our F naturals and C naturals and we're going to add a B flat. This helps us for Mars Walk. <laughs> single notes. You could even practice your tremolo with that. In the future, we're going to do another scale. You may not even get to it until middle school, but it goes up like this. We use F natural. But on the way up, we do B natural, C sharp. And on the way down, we change to C natural, B flat. This is called a melodic minor scale. I got a little messed up there. I guess I need to practice. Happy practicing for you, everybody. Take care. Howdy, this video is for fifth graders. I'm gonna start with our concert pieces. We're gonna be recording videos this week. We definitely want you involved in practicing and preparing and being ready for our video performances. Instead of a live concert, we'll be doing our winter concert plan for our spring concert, which is record videos in class, put them together, and then show that video, showcase that video to you, your family, and your friends. Let's begin with Mars Walk. Lots of cool stuff in this piece, lots of new stuff. I'll start off with the tremolo. Everybody gets to practice a tremolo on the A string or the E string, whatever you have for your instrument. Uh, tremolo is a rapid movement of the bow. Cellos and basses, you get to do it for a whole note. Two, three, four. Violins and violas, you get it on the A string or the E string, depending on the instrument that you have. And you also get an accent, which is a little symbol that looks a little bit like a small crescendo, but it's actually meant to be just a burst of sound at the beginning of the bow's note. So when we do that on a tremolo, it looks like this. Now I'm playing two strings because the violin viola part is E string and A string. Let me do it on just one string. So right before the accented beat, I bring my bow up a little bit to the lower half so I can bring some power into the string for that accent. Here you is the same thing on the A string. So I stop the shake, move my bow up, and then give it a little drop of energy for the accent. Be careful we don't get too close to the bridge. We don't want it to be a nasty sound. Now, the next thing that violins and violas get to do is play low one. So normally this would be where my first finger goes, and this is where low one goes. Violas, you get to play A, B flat, A, B flat. Violins, you get to play E, F, E, F. Sounds like this. I'll play both parts together. Here's the tremolo right before it. Two, three, four. And there it is, the low one. Cellos and bass players, you get to do this in a way too. Cello players on the A string, we do an extension backwards. We just point that finger at our left ear. Here's a couple of clues that'll help you too. Cello players, here's the cello salute. I'm gonna take off my glasses for this one. Index finger of your left hand on your eyebrow. Middle finger on your nose. Ring finger lips, pinky finger chin. This is the back extension for your first finger, also known as the cello salute. That's eyebrow, 
nose, there it is. This is also the same shape as a bass player should be playing. So when bass plays B flat on the G string, it's first finger A, and then instead of fourth finger B, you're gonna play B flat with two. That's how the bass players play their B flat. Cello players, we just point our first finger back with that extension shape. Cello players, I also taught you the bow climb extension practice. That's our back extension inchworm and our forward extension inchworm. This helps us create a big space between one and two so we can reach back for that B flat. All musicians, you're going to learn how to play F natural on this one. First, I'm going to start with violins, violas. So F sharp is usually here, two and three touching. But when we play F natural, now it's one and two touching. Notice that the only finger that changes is the, that's right, middle finger. Remember not to wave it around by itself. Low two plays F on the D string and C on the A string. Low two. Can you find out what other notes it plays on different strings? What's a low two play on the G string? What's a low two play on the E string? Hmm. At letter A, the cello and basses have the same melody that the violins and violas have at letter B. Here's that melody now. The music helps you by asking you to place your bow on the stand. Remember, this is low two. This means let it ring into the rest. No need to stop the sound. That's the curvy line. And E. Sorry, got to start that again. Here's E. Or letter B if you're a cello player or a bass player. French folk song. This piece has the same bow pattern 10 times. And that pattern is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This happens 10 times throughout the whole piece. If you can do it with your eyes closed, or I could ask you to wake up in the middle of the night and try it, don't do that, it's not good for you. Get a good night's sleep. You really know this piece. For example, very beginning, you can see the same thing happening here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, long, up, bow. One, two, three, four, I just got to letter E, that was the first violin part. If you're a second violin or viola playing part, your part's a little different. Here's from the beginning for violas and second violins. Again, that was up to letter E. I think the second violin and viola part can sometimes be more challenging because it's not the melody, it's the harmony part. And that sounds different enough to make it quite a challenge to play together. The cellos and the basses have a different part as well. That makes this one of the most complicated pieces that we've ever tried so far. Here's the cello part from the beginning.
first finger G string, the note is A. Again, we just got to letter E. Now at letter E, the cellos and the basses get the melody for eight measures. Woo! And then we give it back to the violins and violas. Aw. Don't worry, cellos. There will be glory for you in the future. Just not in this piece today. Remember, we get to live the line of the music through our part, because our role in orchestra is to support the foundation of all of the sound, especially you bass players. You are like the rock and the glue, and the cement, and everything else that's sticky and holds buildings up to keep it all together. Without you, we would crumble. So stay strong.